Hey, this is Skell, with your dose of 80s goodness, Undercover. The show where we look at great VHS covers and check if they are true to the film they're trying to sell. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we check out a video rental classic, Alan Quatermain and the Lost City of Gold. Now, looking at the film poster, it looks pretty decent. It catches your eye and seems to promote a film that's full of adventure, thrills and entertainment. Is it really? Let's take a look. The Lost City of Gold is the sequel to the 1985 film King Solomon's Mines. This one also starred Richard Chamberlain as the adventurer Alan Quatermain and a young Sharon Stone as his archaeologist love interest. Fun fact, she was nominated for a Golden Raspberry Award for Worst Actress in this. Side note, she fully deserved it. The story here is your basic Indiana Jones ripoff. A dashing adventurer has to find a lost city of gold after he learns that his brother might be alive and well in this very city. For the journey, he is assisted by his soon-to-be wife, played by Sharon Stone, an African axe-wielding warrior, played by James Earl Jones, an insufferable comic relief in the shape of a simile Hindu shaman, and a fistful of disposable African warriors. They go on an epic journey, meet primitive and hostile tribes, survive giant booby traps, and dangerous rapids, and discover, as well as save, the lost city of gold. For a Canon production, this film has a pretty decent production value. For those who wonder, Canon Films was a production company known for its cheap yet cool action flicks and knockoff titles. Here, they put some money on the table to shoot on location in Zimbabwe, and it shows. There are lots of gorgeous landscape shots in this clear Indiana Jones ripoff. And that's what we get. A proper, unapologetic knockoff from George Lucas and Steven Spielberg's films. Even visually, the film steals shamelessly from Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. The minecart chase is replaced by a cheap boat in Rapids Race, and the villain's lair looks a lot like the Temple of Doom mines. The film is also extremely racist. All non-white characters, except for James Earl Jones, are being portrayed as either cowardly, incompetent, lazy or just plain dangerous. Way to go, 80s. Gotta love him. But I have to say, the film, despite all its flaws, and if you can mentally place it in the context of that time, still manages to entertain. A lot. The film oozes a naive aura and its story goes all over the place. It almost feels like it was written by nine-year-old kids with a sugar rush, playing make-believe. It works because this film doesn't try to hide that it's a rip-off. From the visually similar themes and scenes, down to the character's costume and theme music, we're clearly in India rip-off territory. And this flame proudly claims its copycat approach. It doesn't try to be something more. If you look at the cover, you'll get exactly that. A knockoff of Indiana Jones. It looks like a proper action-adventure film, and all of the characters and scenes depicted on the cover are also in the film which is something rare for 80s VHS covers. It delivers and makes you want to watch the promoted film. Mission accomplished, then. The cover gets an 8 out of 10 for its epicness and, most importantly, 80s-ness. The film, although entertaining, gets a 6 out of 10. The film doesn't always make sense, it's not the best directed work and the lack of budget clearly shows in certain scenes. The whole blatant racism part doesn't help either. But The Lost City of Gold is honest in its delivery and tries only to be fun and entertaining. Also, if you're into fun and entertainment, check out our regular animated series Skell and Ori, where you can find out what video game characters from the 90s are up to today in the real world. Watch it on our YouTube channel. We also have other shows about 80s, 90s flicks and retro video games. The link's in the description. BAM! Thanks for watching Undercover, I'm Skell and I bid you a very fond farewell.